Hello, hello everybody. Can you keep shrimp in your tap water? Well, the answer to that question depends on many factors. When it comes to cherry, AKA Neocaridinia shrimp, the good news is that most of you guys will be able to keep Neocaridinia shrimp in your tap water. But there are some things I'd like to point out for the new shrimp, for new shrimp keepers when trying to keep shrimp in tap water. Also keep in mind that everything I will be talking about in this video pertains to cherry shrimp or Neocaridinia shrimp, which is one of the easiest, most popular to keep species of shrimp, and the only species of shrimp that I personally keep at this moment. The first thing I wanna talk about is everyone has different water. For many people new to the shrimp keeping hobby, water may just be wet. <laughs> Probably all of you know that there's a difference between fresh water and salt water, but you should know that even fresh water has all kinds of salts and minerals in it. The measurement of these different salts and minerals is what makes up what we call our water parameters. The type of water you have varies greatly depending on where you live in the world. There are people on well water and municipal water, all of which draw their water from different sources. It all depends on the minerals in your area, and if you are on municipal water, then not only do you need to consider the ultimate source of where the municipality gets the water, but you also need to be aware that of what may be filtered out or added back in. Long story short is that no two places will have identical water. All water is different and this is important to know. Many of these salts and minerals in fresh water are essential for shrimp tanks in certain amounts, while others are harmful or downright deadly to our shrimp. First, let's go over some of the parameter names and what they mean and what's going on here. The most common and easiest to get parameter reading is called TDS. TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids. The biggest problem with TDS is that it tells us how much stuff is in our water, but it doesn't tell us what the stuff is in our water. It just tells you how much there is, it doesn't tell you what that means, what it is. Which means, unless you know exactly what is in your water, the TDS measurement is completely worthless. I will later explain the only situation where TDS means anything at all, but remember, TDS is only the total of dissolved solids in your water. It doesn't tell us what solids are dissolved in our water. pH, the measurement of how acidic or basic your water is. It is on a scale of zero to 14, which means that 100% pure water will have a neutral pH of 7.0. KH is the carbonate hardness of water. It measures the amount of carbonates and bicarbonates in our water. Carbonates and bicarbonates is what neutralizes acid, acids. Chances are you, are you have probably eaten almost pure KH before. <laughs> if you have taken an antacid, such as Tums, then you are pretty much eating a bicarbonate tablet. Just like in our bodies with antacids, carbonates and bicarbonates neutralize acids, hence the word antacid. In our shrimp tanks, this KH or antacid keeps pH stable. Without any KH, your tank stands the chance of having a pH crash, which means the acidity in your tank goes out of control. GH stands for general hardness. The two biggest components of the GH measurement are calcium and magnesium. The higher your GH, the harder your water is. If you have a very low GH, then your water would be considered soft. Now that we have all the terms covered, I have some really good news when it comes to cherry shrimp. And that is cherry shrimp are extremely, extremely adaptable. What that means is not only can Neocaridinia shrimp survive in a huge range of all the above parameters we just talked about, they can also thrive. That is why cherry shrimp are awesome shrimp for beginners. Over the course of shipping shrimp to people all over the US and helping even more people from all over the world, I've come to the conclusion that as long as you have a little bit of KH, in a calcium source, it is possible for cherry shrimp to thrive. The people who have the biggest issues when it comes to water hardness parameters in Neocaridinia are the folks with extremely soft water. And that can usually be easily fixed by adding crushed coral either as a substrate or incorporated into the tank's filtration somewhere. So now that we know what the parameters mean, 
and know that Cherry Strip can adapt to a huge range of parameters. And through my experiences of helping people and shipping shrimp to hundreds of different people in all kinds of water conditions, I have found that the vast majority of folks can keep cherry shrimp in their tap water. However, I would estimate that somewhere around 5-10% to of people just are not going to have success keeping shrimp in their tap water. So let's take a look at why some people simply could not have success with shrimp in the water out of their taps. The number one reason is consistency. While Neocaridina shrimp can adapt to a huge range of water hardness parameters, the one thing they need more than anything is consistency. When you buy shrimp and your water is different than the place you got them from, they can adapt with a slow drip accl acclimation. Adapting to different water parameters is something they can do once, maybe even twice, but it's still fairly stressful to the shrimp and you can expect some losses. What they cannot handle is consistently changing water parameters. So while they can adjust to a huge range, they still need to have the water that is always the same. This is one of the biggest issues people run into when keeping their shrimp in tap water. For example, in many areas the water can get softer during times of lots of rain and get harder during dry spells. This is because if you get lots of rain, the minerals in the water can get diluted from the extra water. During times of drought, there is less water, so the minerals in the water become more concentrated and your water becomes harder. Or, perhaps municipal water changes how they treat the water and they, that they pump into your house. Any change is bad when it comes to shrimp. Something I've seen over and over again while helping folks out with their shrimp tanks is a lack of consistency causing shrimp die-offs. One, situ one situation I've seen play out time and time again is the following. The shrimp keeper starts off keeping their shrimp in their tap water and they're having success, but not as much success as they had hoped for. Thinking they're doing good for their shrimp with the best intentions, they start putting bottled water or bottled spring water in their shrimp tanks. While this may seem to make sense since we would rather drink bottled water than our tap water in most places, it can really wreak havoc on the consistency of your parameters. Most people have hard water and most bottled water for drinking is usually very soft water. So we end up getting huge parameter swings which spells doom for our little shrimpy friends who want for nothing more than their water to always be the same. The unknown. Da 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 da. <laughs> Without a doubt in my mind, the biggest hurdle to people keeping shrimp in their tap water is simply the unknown. What do I mean by the unknown? By the unknown, I mean contaminants that your typical aquarium test kit does not test for. For many of these contaminants, you would need to send off your water to a lab and pay hundreds of dollars to have it tested. It could be any number of problems, toxins, pesticides, heavy metals. The list of possible pollutants that could spell doom for our shrimp could go on forever. I have a couple of friends who've had situations like this that they have shared with me and I'll share with you. One of my buddies, who helped me out quite a bit when I was brand new at shrimp keeping and the person I actually got my green jade shrimp from years ago experienced problems when he moved from a house with a well with a well water to a house not far away also on well water but on a different well. This guy had lots of successful shrimp tanks, regularly sold shrimp for profit and was doing really good with his shrimp. When he moved he noticed he quit seeing baby shrimp. He had buried shrimp but never seen any babies. He tested everything he could think of and couldn't figure it out. Eventually, with no babies surviving, this colony is withered away to nothing. I have another buddy who had municipal water in a small town. He tried shrimp, and while they didn't really die, he had problem, problems getting them to multiply and thrive. The biggest his colony's ever got were just a small handful of shrimp. He moved to a big city with municipal water 15 or so miles away, and the few shrimp he had left when he moved exploded into hundreds hundreds in just a few short months after moving and being in his new water. There are no noticeable big differences in water parameters in either one of these situations. Both of these guys knew what they were doing. They were doing everything right but had very different experiences after moving. Even though the water parameters that we all normally test for were very similar, the results were vastly different changing tap water sources. My point is that sometimes no matter what we do, our tap water just screws us over. Even if you do everything correctly and even if your water tests good with the commonly tested parameters that everyone goes by, 
you just will not have success because the unknown containments that due to cost and practicality reasons are just not really tested for. So what do you do if your water is simply no good for shrimp keeping? Do not lose hope. You can still keep shrimp, it's just going to be more work and a bit more costly. You can either get an RODI unit or you can purchase distilled water. Both ways are basically doing the same thing. With an RODI unit, you take your tap water and zero everything out. That means there are zero minerals in your water and the pH is 7. Distilled water is the same principle. You're just buying water that has all the minerals zeroed out and a pH of 7. Shrimp need the essential minerals as you cannot keep any living thing in water with no minerals. So zero TDS water, you cannot keep any living thing in. So you need to add in the essential miner minerals. So basically you're taking tap water full of minerals, contaminants and all, running it through a filtration process that zeroes everything out. Then you add back in the, the needed salts and minerals that are needed for shrimp. This way, you make sure that your water is absolutely perfect for shrimp without any of the unknown contaminants. There are several reputable kinds of shrimp remineralizers available. And remember when I told you I would explain the only time TDS is a usable measurement? Well, this is that situation. If you have your water at zero and you know exactly what you're adding back in, then you can go by TDS because TDS only tells us how much stuff is in our water, not what it is. But if you know what know that your water is already at zero and we know what we're adding back in, you can use the TDS measurement to know how much of your salt to put back in your remineralizer. Truth be told, this is what we should all be ideally doing. But for most people, going this route is just not practical and can be especially daunting for a new shrimp keeper. This insulates us from the many different variables our tap water sources may have, especially as the seasons change. I personally do not think having the exact parameters when it comes to cherry shrimp are really all that important as I have per personally dealt with hundreds of different people and a huge range of parameters when it comes to cherry shrimp and people have great success in a huge range. The most important aspect is that your water remains the same consistency. When you change water, the water you put back in needs to be the same as the water that's already in the tank. Consistency. And your water needs to not have any unknowns that we simply cannot readily test for with the typical aquarium test kits. As I mentioned earlier, I would say anywhere from 90 to 95% of folks can have success keeping Neocaridinia in their shrimp and their tap water. But not everyone, and remember, everyone has different water. So not everyone's going to have success. There are going to be people out there who don't. And everyone's water is different. If you want to try keeping shrimp in your tap water, I suggest doing this. Try getting some cheap, cheaper mixed shrimp that are healthy, like my Skittle shrimp that are off from my website, markshellyquacks.com. See how they do, and if they do good and multiply, then, then you know shrimp are going to do good in your tap water, and you can start playing with some of the nicer, more expensive shrimp lines. So, thank you guys for watching. Bye.